Winter is like a weapon. For more than a month now, the Russian army has been attacking the energy infrastructure of Ukraine. After massive shelling, millions of Ukrainians are left without electricity, communications, water and heat supply. Moscow is defeated on the battlefield. Therefore, it resorts to terrorist tactics, experts say. It is clear that the Kremlin is now trying in every possible way to coerce negotiations and accordingly to continue shelling infrastructure facilities on which the civilian population primarily depends is now actually the only method by which the Kremlin is trying to push Ukraine to start the negotiation process. Although it is very doubtful, as it seems to me that this will lead to anything. Power engineers, public utilities and rescuers work around the clock. They managed to return water, heat and electricity supply to most Ukrainians. International partners are also helping Ukraine to avoid the negative consequences of the energy crisis. Poland, Belgium, Finland, Slovakia, Luxembourg, Sweden, Spain, South Korea, France, Latvia, Germany. This is not a complete list of countries that provide Ukraine with generators or transfer equipment to restore the energy system. In addition, Ukraine conducted a test import of electricity from Romania. Ukraine has synchronized its energy system with the European Union, thereby increasing the stability to forced loads or unloading of the energy system. That is, our resistance to emergency situations has tripled compared to the isolated mode in which we worked before. Of course, there are possibilities for emergency assistance, there are possibilities for importing electricity. While the energy collapse has been avoided in territories controlled by Kyiv, people in Russian-occupied cities and villages are freezing in their own apartments without windows and heating. In Mariupol, residents leave inscriptions asking for help right on the facades of buildings, balconies and entrances. The occupation authorities show a flurry of activity and an apologetic promise to rebuild the infrastructure in the near future. Today they continue to sell this narrative at face value and say that life in the city is returning, that there will be gas, that it will be heating, that there will be water and everything else. But we see that winter has come, there is no heating in the city, that there are problems with electricity, because they make it possible to get some kind of generator, some kind of heater, but the power grids cannot cope. So we see the number of fires which has increased multiple times. A situation is similar in other occupied cities, including the settlements in the Luhansk region. Residents were also liberated from heating and comfort by Russian troops. In some districts of Rubizhna, Lysychansk and Severodonetsk, Russians boasted about the return of certain utilities. But there is neither water, electricity nor gas in even half of the houses in any of these towns. Not all at once, but even a single energy resource, not to mention heating. From the message of the Luhansk Regional Military Administration on Telegram. In fact, in some regions of Russia the situation is not much better. In Khakassia, about 70,000 people were left without heating because of a large communal emergency situation. And in Volgograd, residents of the settlements next to the hydroelectric power plant have been living with cold radiators for more than a month. Russia spends tens of millions of dollars on each massive shelling of the Ukrainian energy system. In total, these funds would be enough to solve all the utility problems of the country. Reported by Roman Smoller, Valeria Nikipelova, UATV News.